Hi, I'm Stephen McGill. I'm a neurosurgeon at Northwestern Medicine. Meningiomas can be difficult to diagnose because oftentimes they don't cause symptoms for years. They can be growing slowly and you don't realize it. And they can compress the brain and cause slow things, personality change. Patients think they're just not remembering things as well, memory problems, other things like that. And they don't necessarily realize or get a scan to work up because of the nonspecific symptoms. So the vast majority, 70 to 80 percent of meningiomas are grade one, and when they're treated either with surgery or radiation, then they have excellent long-term survival and a low likelihood of recurrence. But 20 to 30 percent of meningiomas are grade two, and then only a small fraction, one to three percent, are grade three. Those higher grades mean that they're more likely to recur. Meningiomas, because they are typically slow growing, are often labeled benign but they're not necessarily benign for the patient who has a tumor that's causing symptoms that may require surgery, may require radiation, there may be side effects from that. So it, recent work has been done to try to understand the molecular features of meningiomas and predict which ones will recur. Anyone who has cared for meningiomas for a long time knows that there are many grade one meningiomas that actually will recur sooner and it's a surprise and we don't totally understand based off the histologic grade. So now at Northwestern, what we're doing is we, for every patient with a meningioma, we look for specific gene mutations that predict recurrence in addition to what we see under the microscope. We also do broad sequencing panels using next generation sequencing to look for any cancer genes that may, may be mutated or cause uh, an increased likelihood of recurring. Finally, we send the patients for a microarray that looks at the copy number changes in the meningioma. That, we know that as meningiomas get more aggressive, the amount of chromosomal changes that happen within the tumor are associated with increased recurrence. So by looking for those, instead of just saying, well, this is what it looks like under the microscope, by doing these molecular tests in multiple facets, it helps us to get a better idea of the aggressiveness of that meningioma and its likelihood to recur. We also have recently begun doing methylation profiling on all of our meningiomas. And that is a, another technique that allows us to understand the biologic, biologic drivers of that tumor and help us predict whether it will recur or not. So we can tell a meningioma from a glioma. We can tell a meningioma from some rare tumor. And these advances in our epigenetics, under, in the epigenetic understanding of brain tumors has really helped us with brain tumor diagnosis. Within the field of meningioma, that has been a little more challenging. Many groups, including myself, have looked at methylation within meningioma, and we see different groups, but we don't know, are there four classes or three classes or two classes? How do we interpret these findings and move them into a clinically relevant and clinically meaningful insights? Over the years, we have begun to develop a molecular, a gene panel that looks at gene expression changes and actually with greater fidelity than methylation profiling and epigenetic changes can predict meningioma recurrence and response to radiotherapy. At Northwestern we're working to continue to refine those and really pushing hard to bring those predictive variables from just a molecular test we can do in the lab, we could do on research samples, to be able to translate that into a meaningful way to be able to share with a patient you have this mutation or this profile and therefore we should check your scan in six months or therefore I think when we didn't know would radiation help or not, you are someone who might benefit from radiation. We finally have a molecular gene panel and markers that can predict that, and that's the first biomarker that anyone has developed to predict response to radiotherapy in meningioma. These are things that directly impact patients' care, helps guide decision-making, decisions that are very difficult for a patient. We have recent data that's coming out that shows that the longer we follow patients, the more likely we are to find recurrences. So we actually do need to follow these patients long-term. And the question is, how close do we need to follow? So if you have a, the histology, you look under the microscope and you see this is a grade one meningioma, you think, oh, let's just follow it every year. Or, and then after a few years, well, let's follow it every three years or five years, just check. But if we know that that tumor has a gene mutation or a copy number change or a methylation profile that puts the patient at higher risk for recurrence, that, then that's a patient I want to follow more closely. So it helps us provide better care for our patients with meningioma because we can actually tailor, based on the molecular features of each tumor, how we're going to follow them.